I'd ask you to think in a more macro way for a moment. If you look at demand for electricity in the United States today, it is essentially flat across the country. Um, some would say anemic growth. You can make a case there's actually going to be a decline in the use of electricity, even though we're continuing to do electrification of more processes in the country. But when you look at the new technologies, <coughs> there's huge productivity gains in the production, in the delivery, and in the use of electricity. So I think one macro challenge that we all have to think about as we think about the future is a flat to declining demand. There's been a decoupling of the growth in demand for electricity from growth in GDP for the first time in our history. And I could talk more about that if you would like. But that has decoupled and is going to have profound implications for the way forward. The second thing is what Charlie referenced is by 2050, virtually every power plant in this country, with the exception of our hydro plants, and assuming that they don't extend the license for nuclear from 60 years to 80 years, are going to be retired and replaced. It's almost a virtual blank sheet of paper in terms of how do we design the generation mix going forward. Now, the significance of that is, if you believe that cl climate is a problem, and I do, is that if we shut down the nuclear fleet in the United States, that represents 70% of the carbon-free electricity. And the question is, what are you going to replace it with? Are you going to replace it with nuclear? Are you going to replace it? <coughs> we have an abundance of shale gas. Shale gas, which has 50% of the carbon of coal, uh, significantly more uh, emissions <coughs> than, um, than nuclear. And, and so, the, so one of the big challenges and question marks is, as we redesign the generation fleet in this country, what will the mix be? And how will we incent the building of the mix? Because the power sector <coughs> is the most capital-intensive industry in the United States. And as a consequence, we have to attract significant capital in order to replace this generation fleet. The second thing I would say is, our really third point, declining demand, retire, replace all the generation, is that there is a wave of technology that's transforming every aspect of our business. I see technologies today that could reduce our line loss, which is high as 8 to 9%, could drop it to 2%. That would be a significant savings going forward for <coughs> consumers if that can get done. I see efforts to transform our grid from analog to digital. That won't happen overnight, as Mike was saying. But at the end of the day, going to digital simply means we have two-way communication. We'll be able to do, to operate our system more efficiently. We'll be able to do proactive maintenance, which will improve our reliability, which today is about 99.9% .9 of the time we provide electricity. So the reality is, this sweep of technology is huge. 